allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Wyatt. Next order of business we have is any additions or corrections to the board agenda. I have none. Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda as it's presented? So moved. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Good move by Mr. Handy, seconded by Mr. PQ to approve the agenda as presented. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The agenda is approved. Consent agenda, which includes copies of our meeting minutes, special meeting minutes, other executive file attachments, education items such as good, uh, good cause invites and choice invites, and personnel moves, and any business moves we may have in regards to any bids or contracts that we have. So I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Make a motion, Mr. President, to approve the <coughs> consent agenda as presented. Do I hear a second? <coughs> second. It's been approved, it's been moved by Mr. McGee, second by Mr. PQ to approve the consent agenda as it is presented. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. That agenda is approved. Next order of business we have is the collaborative agreement. Dr. Ben. Uh, Mr. Laws, this time we're going to present to the board a series of collaborative bargaining agreements with three of our employee groups, the Nutrition Services Group, Transportation Group, as well as the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, uh, AFL, CIO, Local 218 of Council 81. Um, we've been, as you know, last year we were in negotiations with these groups. They all agreed to a pause. We restarted our negotiations with all of our employee groups, and these are the last three that are coming. These are the next three that are coming up due for uh, approval by the board. We're presenting tonight for each group two documents for approval, for review and approval, an MOU for a one-time payout, a bonus payment, for this school year and then the remainder of the uh, contract is negotiated the salary increases are negotiated in, in, within it all of them have been approved and ratified approved and ratified by their employee groups so we're going to present them here individually for your review and approval so we'll start first with the nutrition services nutrition services mou yes nutrition services mou first do I hear a motion to approve the one-time bonus payment MOU for nutrition services? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Then moved by Mr. Crossan, second by Mr. McGee to approve the one-time bonus payment MOU for nutrition services. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion is carried. Next, I'd ask that you uh, consider and act upon the collaborative agreement with the nutrition services. I hear a motion to approve the collaborative agreement with between the district and nutrition services. So moved. Second. Been moved by Mr. Cross and second by Mr. McGee to approve the Collaborative agreement with nutrition services as presented. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion is carried. Next up would be our transportation uh, employee group. Same sequence. I'd ask first for the board to consider and act upon an MOU for a one time bonus for that group as well. We'll hear a motion to approve the one-time bonus MOU for the transportation group. So moved. Second. Been, been moved by Mr. Crossan, second by Mr. McGee, 
to approve the, the MOU for the one-time bonus payment to the transportation group. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion is carried. I might ask the board to consider uh, and act upon the collaborative agreement with the transportation work. Do I hear a motion to approve the collaborative agreement with the transportation group, group as presented by the administration? So moved. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Crossan, second by Mr. McGee to approve the collaborative agreement with the transportation group as presented by the administration. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion is carried. <clears throat> Last but not least. All right. At this time, I ask the board to consider an act on the MOU for a one time bonus payment for the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL CIOs, Local 218, and Council 81. Do I hear a motion to approve the MOU for the one time bonus payment to ask me? So moved. Second. Been moved move and second by Mr. Crossan, seconded by Mr. McGee to approve the MOU for the one time bonus payment to the ask me organization. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion is carried. Um, this time I'd ask the board to consider an act upon an MOU of agreement, a collaborative agreement with the ASME group. We we'll hear a motion to approve the collaborative agreement with the so group. Second. Been moved by Mr. Crossan, seconded by Mr. McGee to approve the collaborative agreement with the ASME group as presented by the administration. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Next order of business we have is updates and action items. Dr. Menzer. Okay, so at this time I'm going to ask if uh, our tech group can start to bring in as our panelists who our speakers are. Uh, for the uh, work-based learning presentation by the William Penn students. And we can get them up on the screen and we can get, uh, get that started and see who we got. You see in the agenda that we have, uh, the topic is going to be work-based learning. And there's some guiding questions that we're going to um, be hearing about what's been going on at William Penn uh, this past school year in the area of WBL, which is work-based learning. Okay, Dr. Menzer, uh, can you hear me and see the screen? Yes and yes. Okay, perfect, good answer. Uh, good evening, Mr. Laws, uh, Dr. Menzer, school board members, friends and families of the Colonial School District. Uh, my name is Brian Erskine, supervisor in the schools division. And thank you for this opportunity to share how Colonial School District, specifically at William Penn High School, continues to offer and expand college and career readiness opportunities to our students. Uh, in our brief presentation, we will discuss our commitment to college and career readiness. What is work-based learning? Our work-based learning curriculum, and of course, um, and we have two brief student presentations that will showcase their immersion experience. At William Penn High School, it's important to give students access to opportunities beyond the classroom content. As you can see by this slide, we offer many different programs to enhance the learning experience before our students graduate from high school. As you know, our students select a degree program within our three college academies. The remaining items on this list are designed to offer extra opportunities to dive deeper into students' content knowledge and offer college and career activities connected to their program of study. For example, we offer a wide variety of distance learning courses, college courses, 
and access to industry certifications. Additionally, we also offer an extensive work-based learning program. So what is work Workforce Readiness Curriculum? Well, just like other content areas, work-based learning has a set of standards. We want our students to understand what it takes to be successful in the workplace environment. We also want to share career exploration opportunities with our students so they can explore many different types of careers. We want our students to understand employability and professional skills necessary for them to be successful in jobs and careers. So what is work-based learning? In Colonial, it's a progressive instructional approach that connects student courses to job exploration, job placements, and job immersion. We want our students to connect with local professionals and work on specific projects, again, connected to their degree program of study. This picture in front of you is a great example. Prior to the pandemic, this was a William Penn engineering student working at Dassault Aviation located here in Newcastle. Their engineers worked directly with our students, teaching them engineering principles and allowing them to work on small projects for the company. Now I'd like to introduce Anna Morgan, our work-based learning coordinator. She will dive deeper into the program, share her successes with students, staff, and business partners, and then introduce two of our work-based learning students from William Penn High School. Anna? Good evening. I'm Anna Morgan. I've worked with Jobs for Delaware graduates for over six years, where most of my time has been spent working with recent high school graduates to help them navigate their first year of employment or post-secondary education. I've also focused on developing business partnerships and creating internship opportunities. In August of last year, Colonial contracted with Jobs for Delaware graduates to have me serve as the work-based learning coordinator for William Penn. It has been an exciting year and I'm thrilled for what's to come. Our approach to work-based learning is divided into three main components. Awareness focuses on learning about a wide variety of jobs and careers and the education required for those careers. This is often done in CTE classes where students utilize online resources like NEPRIS and Major Clarity. Exploration focuses on exposing students to employers. This is accomplished through informational interviews, job shadowing, mock interviews, and more. Immersion gives students an opportunity to integrate their career and academic skills to real life work experiences. This is often done through school-based enterprises, volunteering, internships, and work. Just like any other subject, work-based learning has standards that guide the curriculum. The standards are divided into prior learning skills and career readiness skills. Prior learning skills focus on the skills workers need to develop in order to be successful in any professional environment. This includes everything from how to send an email cover letter to understanding payroll policy. Career readiness standards focus on the skills students need to develop during their immersion experience. For example, students learn how to evaluate the management style of their supervisor. This then allows them to understand the best way to interact with their supervisor. The employability skills developed throughout the work-based learning program include applied math and literacy, professionalism, critical thinking, career literacy, and more. The success of work-based learning depends on the joint effort between teachers, administration, school counselors, and community and business partners. We send relevant information about job and internship opportunities to teachers and counselors, and in return, the teachers and counselors let us know when they have a student who needs a placement or if they need an employer connection for a job shadow or guest speaker. One of the positive outcomes of the pandemic has been the ability to have guest speakers who wouldn't have had the time to interact with students during normal times. We plan to continue to take advantage of this vir virtual guest speaking opportunities in the future. We also had a student this year participate in a virtual multi-day education job shadow event hosted by the Dover Air Force Base. Here are three highlights of the work-based learning program from this academic year. All of these opportunities were developed and implemented with the help of JDG teacher Schaefer Stark. In the fall, we hosted an interview competition with Discover Bank. 
In preparation for the event, Schaefer and I hosted multiple afternoon workshops where students learned about entry-level job opportunities for Discover. They then learned and practiced interview skills. Students who earned the top two scores won laptops sponsored by Discover. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see Ricky, who will actually be presenting later. He was pretty nervous about the interview and it took some convincing to get him to participate. But not only did he participate, he earned first place and the only perfect score. With summer job application deadlines coming up, Schaefer and I saw the necessity of offering resume workshops in the spring. To entice students, we offered $50 Wawa gift cards and tablets for the top two winners. Employer partners joined us for workshops where they worked one-on-one -on -one with students to edit their resumes. Some of the employer partners were ABC Construction, Blood Bank, Mount Air Farms, and Capital One. Employers then attended a session where they scored the resume submissions. The Spring JDG Career Fair was a major success despite it being our first virtual event. Sarah QJ, the Distance Learning Coordinator at William Penn, did an amazing job creating a career fair website, which allowed students and employers to easily navigate the fair. We had over 30 vendors hosting sessions. We also had live interviews with Big Fish Restaurant Group, Panda Express, and Harry's Hospitality for students who had, event who had attended a career fair prep session. This is Marcellus. He is an amazing student. He attended multiple workshops and many, many one-on-one -on -one prep sessions. And during the career fair, he interviewed for Big Fish Restaurant Group and, and completely blew them away with his interview. He was hired on the spot. A few weeks ago, Schaefer and I were able to go visit him on the job. This slide shows that we have many different components to our work-based learning program. Just like all other classes at the high school, we have created a work-based learning course within Schoology. This online course offers self-paced lessons to develop skills and is available for all students. CTE teachers also have access to this course and can pull activities for their daily lessons. Resume and interview workshops are offered throughout the year and one-on-one -on -one coaching is always available. The William Penn College and Career Schoology Group offers students a place to view job, internship, volunteer opportunities, and to get more information about how to write a resume. The work-based learning credit course is offered to students who are active in an immersive experience. They choose two career readiness standards to focus on during their experience. It's important to us that students who do the extra work connected to work-based learning standards not only receive the credit, but get, get to document the experience on their transcript. Our students are super busy this summer. So JDG has secured internship funding and has already identified five William Penn students to work through that program this summer. Newcastle County Summer Youth hired many William Penn students for opportunities on campus and at local organizations and businesses. And Colonial hired 23 students to work in summer camps, Spanish immersion and technology. And we're actually hiring more as we speak, which is fantastic. Uh, the paperwork has definitely been a challenge for the students, but Mary Jo Lemon has made the experience possible by being so patient with the students and really being clear with exactly what they need to do. So I'm very thankful for her for that. Um, and the onboarding process is a great learning experience for students because that's what they're going to experience in their next job. So it's all good. All of these students will have the opportunity to earn that work-based learning credit. And finally, we just heard that we had a 2021 graduate hired full-time at CMP Fire Protection. So thank you so much to Leo McGee from the school board for reaching out. And if anyone else has any interest in hiring some of our students, please let me know. And now the best part, I'm so happy to introduce two students who are in the computer science pathway. They're both rising seniors. They completed the Code Differently program this year and worked to earn their work-based learning credit. So we're gonna have Ricky go first and then Jordan will follow. So Ricky, you can go ahead and take it away. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, Jordan goes first. Yeah, this is my presentation. Uh, good evening, board. My name is Jordan Hines. Uh, my complex project for work-based learning was called Women's Health. Um, I started the creation of my project when I was involved in a different program and through my internship at Code Differently, I received resources that allowed me to build upon the foundation I had already created for this project on my own. 
Um, my learning project centered around the importance of deadlines and feedback. I presented the code for my project to my supervisors and received suggestions early on about how my code was written and how my website is designed. I took these criticisms into consideration when creating my final project and in how I paced my changes. So my career readiness standards that I picked at the beginning of this course were skill standard 22 and 20. Um, the first being to exhibit professional skills appropriate to the workplace setting, including problem solving, conflict resolution, persistence, and grit, uh, positive response to praise, setbacks, and constructive criticism. And the second being to create a complex project based on what I learned in my time at Code Differently. Um, Having the career readiness standards allowed me to treat my position as more than just an internship. It encouraged me to practice professionalism and keep good work ethic while I was in my position. It also allowed me to immerse myself more fully into the organization. Um, and it also encouraged me to value collaboration. Not only was I working individually, learning to code and use agile development through the resources that were provided to me by Code Differently, but I was also creating projects in teams. And this came with a lot of struggles learning about version control and um, just how different it is being in a virtual workplace in comparison to an in-person one. Um, my work-based learning experience, um, at the same time I was working on these projects uh, with my teams and individually, I was also completing my major clarity profile, which is a career readiness resource offered through the work-based learning program. Um, and I was also learning how I should structure my resume and what I should include about the work I've done in my field to secure future job opportunities. Activities through major clarity included exploring career paths, watching sample job interviews from people in my field, um, planning the courses and activities I wanted to take um, and involve myself in before my graduation. This had an impact on my career readiness standards, standard 22, which focused on conflict resolution, positive response to praise, critique, and the feedback on the work that I did. Um, on both my major clarity profile and my resume, I had my work assessed by Ms. Morgan. This program most certainly elevated um, the level of responsibility that I had in my position, and it helped me to be, uh, be prepared for few, uh, further professional development, my apologies. So this is the project that I created um, in my time at Code Differently. As you can see, this is my um, main page of my website as well as my about page. Next up are uh, my statistics page and my call to action. All of this was built um, in my time at Code Differently. I had a foundation for this project before I um, joined the company, but with the critique and uh, praise that I was given by them, I was able to restructure the website I had built. I focused more on the design of the website um, and it all around became a more accessible and formatted project. Evidence of my work-based learning standards. Um, these are the initial pieces of feedback that I received from my supervisors. And this is a picture showing a few times over the months that I made changes to my project. In taking these steps, I immersed myself in my learning experience at the company while still continuing work on my project. The standards I was taught to exhibit in this program also helped me during my departure from the company because sadly I had to step away earlier due to uh, personal conflicts and I was commended for the work that I did in my time there and encouraged to pursue, uh, pursue further work in the field. Hey, uh, Jordy, can you uh, just tell the school board super quickly your what is the purpose of your website? Like kind of you, you explained it, how it connects to your work-based learning, but Really, I think they'd be excited to know what you're trying to, to accomplish. Okay, uh, with my website, the original purpose of this creation um, was to provide resources to um, educate users on women's health and how discrimination in medical fields majorly impacts women, um, specifically minority women, taking uh, huge tolls on those in the LGBTQ community um, and black women and how it is more likely that um, medical professionals will not believe women um, stepping forward with their problems um, in the medical field. Yeah. So it focused on raising awareness about that. Thank you, Jordan. Of course. Okay, Ricky. Hi, my name is Ricky Cervantes. Um, while I was writing this, I was a junior at William Penn High School. 
And I'll be talking about my experience at Code Differently, a job program and opportunity I was given while attending William Penn. All right. The main objective of the work-based learning program was to introduce me to a job environment that I might experience in the future. The program had taught me professionalism, industry standards, and how to conduct myself when interacting in teams. I spent a large portion of the program learning about the job environment, necessary skills, and technology that I need to program and create real websites. Uh, during the start of the program at William Penn, we had to choose standards or goals we believed would make our careers successful. And so I chose skill standard number 12 and skill standard number 15 as they stood out to me and what I found most important. Skill standard number 12 is to demonstrate proficiency in task management and career specific applications, resources, technology, and equipment as exhibited through assignments and work deliverables, which was a large portion of my dev shop learning new applications and technologies. And skill standard number uh, 15 is helping me to submit a targeted cover letter, resume, or application with references to my prospective uh, employers, because I believe that a resume is one of the most uh, important things to introduce me to any uh, future employer. Through the, uh, throughout the dev shop experience, I have learned various programs and techniques that also revolve around projects and modules. The final project from the dev shop had me creating an app that incorporates an API to display a location of a food bank to the user. And I'll be going through the gist of the process I took in making it. So here's a project I was currently working on. I was working on this project to create an app that gives uh, resources to the people of Delaware. And the specific page was going to give the user the locations of local food services, such as hot meals, food banks, food pantries, etc. This was prototyped and made on Figma, a design application that, I, uh, that I'll be explaining later on. So this is the full prototype of what I wanted my page to look like before I began programming. This was also created in Figma. Uh, this is an example of the application Visual uh, Code Studio and a small part of my code to show kind of the back end that is involved with creating web pages on the internet. Uh, and this is currently how the website looks like uh, with all that being said. So my experience with the work-based learning program provided guidelines to how I should present and conduct myself in a dev shop. It also helped me collaborate productively when creating my websites. I believe this helped me uh, make the process of creating a prototype of a, live, of a website and programming into a real and live website much easier. I was able to divide my time evenly between working and learning the methods of programming. And here's also a QR code to my workspace in GitHub to follow the progress of the website and any future projects. Uh, this is demonstration of skill standard number 12. At the end of the Dev Shops course, I was able to attain the skills of these new technologies. Visual Code Studio was used to hold the bulk of my code and make the entire process possible. Figma was the application I had mentioned earlier that helped me prototype websites and capture the vision of my project. And Team Treehouse was a very helpful resource uh, teaching me all I needed to know about programming. Uh, this is all my, also my skill standard number 12, demonstrating my comprehension of technology and programming languages. JavaScript, HTML, and CSS are fundamentals of website development and industry standard I now possess. Uh, here is a resume demonstrating my knowledge of creating a cover letter, resume, and application with references to my prospective employees. And I reference my work experience I code differently, and it really helps to beef up my computer skills and knowledge of technology. I appreciate the time you took out of your day to listen to me, and I also appreciate this wonder op um, wonderful opportunity. Thank you. All right, well, we certainly want to thank our amazing uh, students, uh, Ricky and Jordan, uh, for, their, for sharing their experience. It's never easy to go live in front of the school board, and, uh, but they were amazing students. I want to thank Ms. Morgan for the great job uh, that she continues to do. And uh, at this time, um, if the school board uh, has any questions, we certainly uh, love to hear them. Any questions from members of the board for our presenters? Uh, just a thank you to Anna Morgan. Anna Glam McGee, thank you.
Thank you. It's a great opportunity. I look forward to getting more students for you in the future. I hope so. Are you going to expand that to any other businesses? Could you, could, are you going to expand it to any other businesses? We'll take any businesses. Absolutely. Contact me and we'll find you some kids. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll jump in. It's one of the benefits of having uh, Miss Morgan from JDG. JDG is all is already connected to businesses throughout the state of Delaware. Their involvement with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Dr. Menzer is, is a board member there. So we, we, we really have uh, kind of access to lots of opportunities. And I got to say, the job that Miss Morgan has done within the pandemic, I mean, you know, not a lot of kids went to William, physically went into William Penn High School, but we didn't miss a beat. She had, you know, she's done a great job of connecting with kids, sharing information through Schoology. When we're back in school, that we're going to explode with opportunities. So we're just really super excited. And this is really, I mean, look, this just makes high school one notch even more meaningful when they are connecting what they're studying in school to uh, potential jobs. And just, you know, Ms. Morgan's comment about just onboarding, filling out applications, you know, things as adults we might take for granted, if students have never done that before, what a great time where we can help them and assist them and help them every step of the way so that when they do graduate high school, they've already got all that skill set uh, in their tool belt. Rick, anything? No, no, that's good. That's great, though. I like that. Robin? I guess I got a couple of questions. Is part of your teaching that you do and your, your mentoring and whatnot you do with, with the uh, students? understand that you're working with them on doing resumes and how to do interview skills. What, give me some of the parts of those interview skills that you go over with them. I mean, is it not only how to address the potential employer, how to present themselves both physically as well as verbally and mentally, but what are those type of items? That you're yeah, so there's a lot of stuff. I wish we had invited Marcellus because when I tell you he did research, he did research, he practiced so many times. But, um, you know, it's everything from teaching them how to how to do it on Zoom, too, is really interesting, right? Because we're not shaking a hand. That's usually the first thing I teach someone is how to do a proper handshake. Um, but with Zoom, I actually taught them how to make sure they have a private place in their home where they have proper internet or uh, explaining that, oh, my little sister might be crying in the background. Those little things that um, are so important for professionalism that students just don't think of. Um, in addition to, of course, how to dress, um, making sure that you ask a question at the end. But I always make sure that a student that I'm coaching knows the answer to tell me about yourself. I practice that and probably make them repeat a pack to me probably about 20 times before I let them be done um, because they should just be able to do that. Um, you know, a lot of students, a lot of people in general get anxious, right? So the more we can practice, the, the less, the more we can reduce that anxiety because we're just so incredibly prepared. So just making sure they know how to answer all of the basic questions, your greatest strength and weakness, those basic questions, but also most importantly, making sure they're researching the company they're interviewing for. So we teach them even, I'll share my screen and show them, I'll say, what, what's a business you're interested in working for? Chick-fil-A. So I'll Google it and I'll show them how to find Chick-fil-A interview questions and how to look on Chick-fil-A's website to learn more about the company. So we, we really do have a comprehensive approach. At JDG, we've been teaching interview skills since the 80s. So this is definitely something that, you know, is in our wheelhouse. So we just make sure they're they're as prepared as any other interview candidate. You work with them on how they should be addressing any questions around salaries, those type of things that you, they should be looking for or suggesting those type of things. Absolutely. So what I typically um, ask them to do, they should know the salary going ahead because they should have done the research and Googled it. And knowing if, if it's a minimum wage job, then they know what state we live in. So they should know what minimum wage is in that state. If not, um, they should know ahead of time. If not, I always coach them to not ask that at the first interview. So that would be a question that would be asked upon hire. Thank you very much.
I just want to add one point that, you know, kudos to JDG for uh, bringing forward this opportunity. If I'm not mistaken, we're, William Penn is the only high school in the state right now that has this position uh, at a high school level. It was a experimental position for a two-year agreement with Jobs for Delaware graduate to really grow it and develop it, something that Colonial, you know, we've been talking about at William Penn High School since I was the principal and Brian was there as a supervisor. And uh, kudos to JDG for putting, putting the whole package together and allowing us to go along for the ride as they really build out something that I think has a lot of potential for growth. So kudos to Anna for, for really jumping in there at William Penn and uh, the William Penn team for really embracing her as part of the Colonial family. So uh, that's, I just wanted to add that. Thank you very much. And thank you, Anna and Brian and your presenters. Uh, thank them again for us and uh, wish them all luck in their future endeavors. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Our next order of business we have is a tax warrant. I'm going to ask uh, Emily Falcon, the chief financial officer, to come up to the table here and have a conversation with the board around where we are with our tax warrant and the proposal that um, we're working on. Good evening, board members and the rest of Colonial Nation in uh, cyberspace. <laughs> uh, so tonight, instead of off, instead of offering the finalized tax warrant for your approval, um, I wanted to update you on where we are. The original plan was to have the, the tax rate before you today, because next month, um, the deadline for us to submit the rate to the county actually become, comes before our regularly scheduled board meeting. Um, so we were going to try to do this in June um, to, to avoid having a special board meeting. However, um, we have gotten word that there is a possibility that the bond bill committee at the state level is contemplating um, adding some additional dollars to the state budget for um, our minor capital improvements allocation. Um, traditionally, minor capital improvements must be matched with local funding at a 60-40 ratio. So if we were to approve a tax rate tonight, and then this, the state board, um, excuse me, the legislature um, approved an increase in our minor capital improvement allowance, I would be coming back to you with an adjusted tax rate. So rather than do that, <clears throat> we figured I would just give you sort of a preview of where we're headed, and then we can um, streamline the process for the meeting at the beginning of July. So you see on the, on the screen here, I've just given sort of a little bit of a preview. Um, our operating tax rate, obviously that's not gonna change. That's subject to a referendum and we um, thankfully haven't gone through one of those this year with everything else that we've had on our plate. So <clears throat> that's not gonna change. Our debt service rate is actually, uh, I can take that down by two and a half pennies based on the, the repayment schedule that we're seeing. Um, we have not gone out for a major capital referendum in many, many years. So what we have is debt is retiring. And as that debt is retired, the payments go down. And so our debt service rate can actually come down by two and a half pennies. Um, and I'm confident that that's, that's you know, going to hold. There's no, no other information that could change um, with that. The tuition tax rate um, right now, <clears throat> right now, I'm not bringing forward a recommendation for any change. I think we're, you know, we're solid in, in what we've got going on there. Um, <clears throat> always, you know, the more information I can get it toward the end of the year, the more solid my projection, projections can be. But at this point, I, I don't think that we're going to need to move that rate at all. So it really is that match tax rate or that minor capital improvement rate that is subject to, to change or adjustment based on what the General Assembly does with the bond bill and their minor capital allocations. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to entertain a discussion or any questions that you have. Uh, but that's sort of where we're headed for the beginning of July. You have possibly written there for the tuition, except uh, possibly going up, going down. Yeah. Well, it's um, I would I would entertain that. I don't see any um, reason to keep the rate, or to, I don't see any pressing reasons to increase the rate. Depending on how much money comes out of the bond bill for the minor capital improvement, if there is any desire to. Um, to keep the tax rate the same and 
we want to increase the minor cap rate more than two and a half cents, there's a possibility that we could adjust the tuition tax rate downward to keep the tax rate consistent for our taxpayers. Um, there's also the possibility that I could change other allocations within the match tax rate to pull that number down and maximize the minor cap rate. So there's there's a couple different factors, um, but if they if the state were really generous in giving minor cap um, money, and we ex we would have to exceed that two and a half cents that we have kind of the wiggle room for the debt service. Um, the possibility that I would go to next, if the desire was to keep the tax rate consistent, I would I would adjust the tuition tax rate down well, um, to to leave our taxpayers you know where they're at today. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah, that's that's where I was thinking about it. Now they will have um, uh, bond bill. Of course, would be all part of this part of, by the end of the session on June thirtieth, correct? Correct. They are scheduled to meet for markup on the twenty second of June. Um, but when we have information in terms of what the allocations are going to be, is is anybody's guess beyond that? Yeah, so, and we have a special meeting scheduled for this. It's actually just a regular scheduled meeting because it's before seven days on July 6th at 7.30, which will be straight up virtual. This will be released to the board as soon as we have it in more docs for your review. So you'll see this, this chart filled in uh, based on the planning oh, that way that way and how long today based on what the bond bill says. Yeah. So these board members just make sure that as Emily's given us a preliminary information now, but just make sure we're well aware of anything that may come out of the board docs. I'm sure that Ms. Russell will send us a note that something's uploaded or something. Yeah, we'll, we will treat this like any other board meeting will be posted seven days prior. Although in fact I believe it may already be posted we'll it post it on be, yeah. right. But since it's but virtual for the information, the information will be yeah. yeah. Yes. As soon as it's out there, make sure everybody yep. knows. And if there's any questions, we can. Give them I a will. Quickly. It'll be probably the time. It'll be right around the time too when I'm giving you all a call between board meetings just to check in. So that'll also be a reminder as well. Is there any other questions from any any members of the board and what uh, was presented here to us? I do. Um, Emily, nothing changes for now. We don't see the general assembly doing. Do you already have a number in mind of what you were? Right now, um, so if if everything holds and the General Assembly doesn't take any action on the minor cap, um, then I would probably present the two and a half cent reduction that's that's contemplated. What does that look like to the general public? You know what? I don't have that. Um, I don't have that off the top of my head. I would have to. I would have to get an estimate on that. It would realistically, it would be pretty minor for most folks. And over the years we've done that, but where we have an opportunity to pass savings along to our homeowners and our residents, we we'll never do that. You know, also recognizing the value of maintaining and getting that match for the M's minor cap is also with our buildings right. uh, to be beneficial for the long term investment in the community. Say further paying down the road. How long do we have to spend on the minor cap money if we get that? It's a three-year appropriation, so um, we have plenty of time to spend it. And, and you know, to Dr. Mentor's point, that's that's the one area now with with all of the other resources that we have available to us that um, I would not want to miss an opportunity to have extra funding coming through for our facilities. Given, especially getting the money now, waiting until this very high inflation as far as construction wise, like if we could wait that. It would be really great to. Mm, yeah, that's that's a, that's, that's a tricky one. Yeah. Yeah. Depending it's on the project question. and the need, yeah, 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 there's a lot of. Don't I know? But it'd be nice, like you said, to get the funds now. Right. Yeah. yeah, get it, get get it while we get it. While oh, we that's can, also uh, too why we were cre created a few years ago is we separated our budget. We had leftover funds from the previous year, so we know how we, that we're spending that before we spend the yep. spend the others. Absolutely. Any other questions, Chris? Leo, any Good. Ron? No. Rob? No. Nope. Chris asked mine already. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep us well informed as you always do. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Next up is the Code of Conduct for uh, the revisions to the Code of Conduct for the 21 22 school year. This is a first read for the board. 
Uh, as it notes in the agenda, the only uh, changes to the code at this time are pages 30 to 43. At this point, the, uh, we've added a specific section for anti-harassment and discrimination policy procedure for students. So it's posted in? It's posted in the board documents. Document. You'll, you'll, you'll see the page numbers there um, that are indicated to go to the, the document. And outside of just changing the names in the back, and your names on the front, like that. Those are the only other substantive changes. Okay. Uh, the policy manual. The policy manual. This actually was a driver for the addition of the uh, anti-harassment and discrimination, specifically to students. Uh, based on board, based on our our legal counsel's advice, we um, were uh, we separated the anti-discrimination and harassment policy. It used to be policy three fourteen into two separate policies, one specifically for students that the first read you're going to see is policy 218, and then now a revised policy 314 that is specific for staff. Uh, and this will bring us into compliance with federal and state requirements. The, the long and the short, I think the best way it, it's in the, in the agenda here is that it now uh, helps clearly identify who the claim should go to and what the appropriate actions are as it's follow that claim when it's lodged. And it spells it out for all to see. I think that's probably the highest highest level of review of what's, what's new to this, these two policies. So those are a first read. All right, okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be bringing both that and the code of conduct back to you for a second read and approval uh, in July. Okay. Superintendent's report. Thought I'd take a little different approach instead of having prepared anything to explain like where we are at the end of the school year and how things are looking, which is probably a good thing because today at 1230, the governor said no masks in schools for staff. And things are changing rapidly with the close out of school year, which means things are gonna look different a little bit in the summer and probably a lot more different in the, in the fall. So I figured it'd be easier if you had any questions that were pressing on your mind, just have you know, fire off any questions otherwise uh, Continue to you know monitor our emails that you, you see regularly to our staff that announce our initiatives. Well, the first thing that I'll bring up, it's not only for the superintendent, but it's also for the whole district. I want to uh, thank you and your staff and whatnot for the graduation ceremonies that we pulled off um, last week. Uh, unfortunately, with the weather was pushing us off of the stage. <laughs> yes. Um, so it kind of the clouds. Yeah, I kind of feel. It's unfortunate for our student speakers that were supposed to happen, but um, can't mess with Mother Nature, I guess. So that that. But again, congratulations and thank you for another well well done job for graduation. Kudos to the William Penn team for putting that together on pretty short notice under pretty tight conditions with UD controlling a lot of the ball and then reacting specifically to the fact that, you know, light, lightning 10 miles out means you got to empty the stadium and that means after it passes, this needs to be 10 miles gone before you can bring people back in. And then with about a hundred names left to go, being told you have five minutes to get off the stage, uh, you know, that, that was a, a tall order. And if you didn't notice, Jim Comagy is the director of secondary schools. He was the point man. He was the guy with five radios on, like looking like a guy on the runway directing traffic. In fact, I think he was the young, he's the man who rescued the young lady who had the shoe debacle on the way across the runway. He scooped in and helped her out and get across the thing. So Jim did a, a dynamite job being the liaison between us and UD. And that was not an easy task. We were one of the few, we were the only Delaware school, I think, to go outdoors. And, and you know, we appreciate UD opening their doors to us and letting us get in there. It would have been nice to have a full ceremony. But to Ted's point, Everybody's name got called. Families got to see what they came there to see, and it was it was pretty special. I think it went really well. So kudos to the high school team. And you said there are some plans for the student speakers to be able to. Do a They're working right now plans through the student speakers getting the ability to do a presentation with a little bit of a live audience, get the get the, the props that they've been looking for to say their speech with, with adults present, not just sitting in a green screen or somewhere or standing in front. That's the last I heard. You know, I'm not a producer, so I don't know how that goes. You know, there's a lot of logistics to go into that, but I know that was the goal. Lisa was adamant about that on the night after that she wanted to give them an opportunity. Right. Questions for the superintendent? Mr. Andy? No. No? No, good. Mr. Good. Carlson? Mr. McGee? Good. Mr. Beecham? No. Ted good. took mine because it was, it was really special for the graduation. I felt nice to do that. And, 
was really great. So great job. Good. How many schools had graduations? Everybody had them. If you follow the news journal, they did a lot of outside graduations. Some of the smaller schools were able to get into the field house in the Chase Center. Uh, the, the 76ers, the, the Blue Coats, or is that the, the 76ers? 87ers. 87ers Fieldhouse. They were, the Red Clay was able to get in there. Botec used Frawley Stadium for over three days. During the day, they did some morning graduations, played a little Monday. Joy sticking with the weather to get it in. Um, but I think every every school I saw had a graduation. Um, I think the only ones at the university was us in Avangro. Avangro was coming in the day, uh, the, the, day, the day or two behind us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you to the board for your support on that. I mean, again, go back to the conversation we've had before. You guys allow the school to do what they feel is best and don't get involved. And you came out on that day and just did your part and rolled with it, shuffled the, shuffled the seats on the Titanic, moved around, mm -hmm. sat behind chairs and tables. And, Carried tables and took second fiddle to you know Eric Jones standing in front of everybody to hand it <laughs> pointing at the table and handing out the phone. I mean, that takes a you know that's not the case in all places. Sometimes people want to be front and center and be that be 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 all about them, but it really was all about the kids. And thank you to the board for allowing that to happen. It made our jobs on the stage easier as well as those people working that event to know you had their back. So I have to say that publicly. We identified the young man in terms of Dustin. The guy who did the spin instead of the guy who spun himself around. I hope he wasn't the guy who wowed them in the interview just now because that I, I could see him being that guy instead of flipping his tassel and right spun around. That was pretty classic. I gotta say, I've never seen that. We sit together, we both cracked up and never seen that. A lot of impressive shoes, I will say, too. There were some interesting shoes, but other than that, you're right, it was a nice event. Good, and a hat was not being my first one. <laughs> All righty, next order of business we have is Delaware School Board Association update. Mr. Cross. Okay. Um, Chris and I attended the uh, legislative meeting, and uh, John Marinucci re reviewed every bill in the House and Senate related to education, and many of them they took a neutral position. But um, there's a bill to reduce school board terms from five years to four years, and uh, the position of the Delaware School Board Association on House Substitute 1 for House Bill 92 um, will not improve school board service. It will potentially do harm in reducing those willing to serve due to higher cost. It will over-politicize board elections and reduce the continuity and consistency of school board leadership, all to cost of students and district staff. It is for these reasons the DSBA and its members strongly oppose House Bill 92 and its House Substitute 1. Um, that bill actually passed the House on the 10th of June, and today it was voted out of committee in the Senate, and we're on record as opposing it. Uh, Chris, did you have any name? No, it, it, it narrowly passed. I think it was 23 right, or right. something, so that was bipartisan against it, too. So we so, need to reach out as individual senators members. to our senators and our respective It is being driven politically. I don't want to go any further on that. I'm against it. Anybody can call their senator and go against it or go for it. Doesn't make sense, though. No reason for it. Right. Executive committee? Nothing at this time. Nothing at this time? No. Okay. Who's involved with the politics? <clears throat> Items removed from the consent agenda, we had none. Any items added to the agenda, we had none. Public comment. We did receive an email earlier in the week from a Deborah Miller who said their login Zooming was going to be a Henry Miller. I do not see them present uh, in the audience at this time. If they're there, could they indicate so, raise their hand, or make a make yourself known. Make yourself known to the uh, technical support here and we can bring you forward. Uh, that said, I don't see any hands raised, so I'm going to say there is no public <laughs> Okay. That being said, any other items from the any members of the board? Not so I hear a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We hear a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. We are adjourned. All right. Breaks the crown. <laughs>